CBS Atlanta News presents Public Affairs on Peach. It is wedding season, in case you don't know, but did you know that the number of people getting married is dropping? For the first time ever, the percentage of married households in America is below 50%. That's according to the 2010 census. So why the decline? And while straight couples decide not to walk down the aisle, gay couples want the right to tie the knot. Today on Public Affairs on Peach, we're going to be taking a look at the status of marriage in America. Good Sunday morning to everyone. I'm Brandon Rudad. So what is the deal? Is marriage suddenly becoming obsolete? David and Deborah Woods Fellow are couples counselors with the Woods Fellow Institute for Couples Therapy. Good morning to the both of you. Good to have you here. Good morning. We could talk for hours on this topic, yeah. right? So why the decline of marriage? Why are we seeing less and less people tying the knot? There's a lot behind it, isn't there it? There is a lot behind it. Um, certainly what gets in the way of marriage for people are all the difficulties that they see their friends having. And so I think a number of people will say, gee, I'm really worried about getting married because I see all my friends around me are just, they're having troubles, they don't know how to work with it, they don't know what to do. Well, what is the number one trouble that you see when couples come when couples come to you? If you're saying that a lot of people are kind of holding back on marriage because they're seeing a lot of their friends may be in a marriage that isn't quite as happy and they don't see it as well, it's not that great. You know, what are they seeing when they come to you? What is the number one pe reason why couples may get divorced or the number one problem that couples have in their relationship? The number one cause of divorce is affairs, but the most of the couples who come to us our marriage is really in crisis, where things are really bad. And there's a big three that we see. And they're affairs, abuse, and addiction. Those three are really extreme difficulties that are generally a crisis in that relationship and potentially deal killers. So th that's what comes to our office most of the time. All right, so you, you, you know, we, we hear, especially in politics these days in a presidential election cycle, we keep hearing the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of marriage. Yet, for those who preach the sanctity of marriage, a lot of times they're the ones out there with one, two, three, or four mm -hmm. wives. And they're maybe on their fifth marriage. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to you like that. Is that a behavioral problem when they go through wife after wife after wife and they get remarried over and over and over? Uh, I'd say yes, it is a problem. Of course, spouses and partners shouldn't be disposable. What's missing is the ability to work out problems. For instance, incompatibility, which is listed as the second cause of divorce. I don't think incompatibility is, is always hopeless. In fact, a lot of times I think incompatibility is just a failure of imagination and a failure of willingness to work something out. People don't have the skills mm -hmm. to work out differences. Well, we talk about incompatibility. So, you know, I know my parents got married when they were about 16, 17 years old, right? But listen, growing up in their household, there was a lot of rough roads, right? They, they, my parents, I believe, you know, grew apart, as I believe many parents do when they tie the knot so young in age. If a couple comes to you, are you seeing, would you advise them to kind of maybe hold off not getting married at 17, 18 years old and, and perhaps grow and become an adult, join the real world, get a job, have a paycheck, have adult responsibilities before you take on a marriage? Well, certainly that's a reasonable suggestion. I guess it's one that we all hope for our kids. Would you be nervous if... It, 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 if somebody wants to get married at 17, teen? 18 years old. These but people in my parents' generation did it all the time. The statistics these days are that people married at age 16 are four times as likely to divorce as people married after 20. So that young marriages really, that young, really divorce a lot more. You've worked with gay couples in couples therapy. A lot of gay couples come together in their 30s and 40s. Do you see anything different in the bond between a gay couple that you do and a straight couple? Um, turns out that's been researched and the answer is not much. Uh, gay couples dynamics and straight couples dynamics are pretty similar. Some of the basic elements of relationship are security, friendship, conflict management, and a sense of meaningful connection. And when it's been researched, 
in psychological studies, it turns out gay couples' relationships are at least of equal quality with straight relationships, and actually maybe a little better. That what they get a little better at is conflict management. And especially lesbian couples are better than straight and gay couples at conflict management. Why? Because they're better communicators? Um, I think so, and also less likely to engage in extremes of uh, anger and negative behaviors. Now, I'm not saying that that never happens. Mm -hmm. Of course it happens. But if we look on the average as a group, and we look at lesbian couples, straight gay couples, and uh, straight couples Couple and, and men, mm -hmm. um, the conflict management is not the same in all of them. So the research says, actually, uh, gay couples do a little bit better. All right, advice, because we were talking about this. A, a couple's been married for a really long time. They got married at a young age. You say incompatib incompatibility kind of comes into factor here. Advice, ad advice for them is, is to go seek help early. Yes, as early as they can, of course. And one of the things to think about when it comes to it, what people experience inside as incompatibility is actually sometimes it's a difference of style. Style such in, you know, it feels extreme from the inside of the couple, mm -hmm. but the style differences of one's messy, one's neat, one's suspender, one's a saver, mm -hmm. one's more... Those are things that, you, that can be talked about and discussed and worked through. Yes. Absolutely. Despite Absolutely. being one of the one of the married men out there that kind of grass is greener up, oh, I don't like this about you, I'm off to the next one. Right. We do see that happen. It's one kind of choice. Yeah, a choice, um, and, and it's not doing the work either. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is it's exactly, exactly right. not doing the work. All right. It's good to have you guys here on the show. David and Deborah Woodsfellow, good to have you here and talking about it. We appreciate it. Thanks if very much. given the choice, would you choose not to get married, but live as if you were a married couple. Coming up next, you're going to meet a couple from right here in Atlanta that have been together now for 16 years, but have never tied the knot. Stay with us. We'll hear their story.